So this is probably not really the right lightning talk for this audience. This is more about CPP con talk because you guys already know everything about copy elision, right? There's, okay, so there's a few few people hesitate maybe. So I'm not really, uh, I'm assuming you knew, knew this already. What I'm gonna show you is something that actually Dave Abrahams showed me many years ago. And at that time I felt like I kind of understood copy elision and return value optimization, but I didn't really understand it until he showed me the slides I'm about to show you. Actually, they weren't exactly that way because I got really excited. I said, Dave, that's really great. And he says, that's not that great. I said, what do you mean it's not that great? And he says, well, it's not technically correct because of this and this. And I said, okay, I'll fix that. So um, what I'm gonna show you is about um, copy elision. And the, and the point again is, I'm not really trying to teach you that, you know that I'm trying to show you how, how it can be visualized. Um, so uh, the first question is, how many parameters are we passing to this function? Pretty straightforward, right? What? All right. So the C++ programmer would say, there's no, not, we're not passing anything, there's no parameter. But an assembly language programmer would say, wait a minute, you are passing something. What are we passing? We're passing the address where we want the result, right? This function returns the result. Somehow, the, the function that we're calling has to know where that result goes. So that's what's actually happening. So this is uh, the unoptimized version of how we classically think of a return value optimization working. So here's a function g calling a function f. This is the stack for g. This is all its parameters, which there are none. And then this is the locals, where there's an x, which we're, which we're going to uh, populate by, uh, by calling f. So now we call f, and this is uh, the stack frame for f, uh, including the parameters that we pass in. Remember, we said there is one. Um, and, then, and then space for the locals. So what is the parameter we're passing in? It's the address of the return value, which is the address of x. Uh, and then so we make this call, passing that in. And now uh, f is populating b and a. And now we get down here where we're returning. And of course, what happens is we're going to copy a into the address we told it to copy, right? And the reason we do this is why? Because all compiler writers are complete morons. No, this is not how it's done, right? We instead use return value optimization. So this is what's actually happening with return value optimization. Uh, same setup, except now it's RVO. And what we're going to do now is we're going to call f. And instead of, uh, we're going to pass in the address where we want the result. But notice, the, uh, the generated code, the, the, the code we're calling, doesn't create a space for a. Why? Because a is being returned. So we go ahead and write to b, and then when we write to a, instead of writing it to the stack and then copying it back, we put it there directly. So this is my visualization, and I, I understood now our value, um, uh, return value optimization better than I ever had when I saw this. So uh, now we can ask these questions. Uh, would RVO be used here? And I think once you understand what's going on, it makes it pretty clear that we're not going to be able to use this because the compiler doesn't know whether a or b should be created in the return value. So we're not going to be able to use this. And this has either a or a default value. But either way, we can't use return value optimization for this. All right, so copy elision is essentially the same thing except done with parameters. So this time, uh, g is calling f and passing in a temporary. Um, and so as we populate, here's our temporary, which doesn't have a name. It's just a big dot, so that's my temporary. Uh, but now we're, now we're going to call into f. f has um, uh, uh, the local, which is b here, and it's passed in the parameter, which is a. So what's happening is we're going to copy a from our, uh, the stack frame of g into the stack frame of f so that we can call f and f can use a. By now, you've probably caught on to what's actually going to happen because no compiler writer would ever write that. Instead, what they're going to write is the copy elision version. So in the copy elision version, g doesn't create any space uh, on it, uh, for its temporary. What it does, in fact, is when it creates the f stack frame, it goes ahead and creates the temporary right in the stack frame for f rather than doing the copy. Notice this won't work if we need to have this value afterwards. So that's why it works with temporaries. If this was an L value, then we would need it down here. And so we couldn't just create it in the space for, uh, for the function that we're calling. So, um, so that's how these things work. And again, I'm just showing you this to visualize it, because I, I hope you guys already understood copulation. But now I hope you understand it a little better. So thank you very much.